How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 77. I decided to remake the crossheads entirely and exactly as per the drawing, using new laser cut covers. This time the main blocks will be accurately machined to the correct size to start with. Previously, when I made the new crossheads, I copied the dimensions from the old ones and they were wrong. I didn't do this by accident, I knew it was going to be wrong as I was making it. This is from a previous video, but it's not part of this series. Here's the link on screen to this video where everything goes wrong. When it goes live on YouTube, it will be in the Workshop Topics playlist. It serves me right for not reading the drawing and taking the dimensions of some very badly made crossheads that I was replacing to start with. I bought a new set of parts which include these plates, because these are quite marked now. But they're OK for marking out the piece of steel that I also bought at the same time. The job begins by truing up the end of the piece of steel. Most of the parts from Blackgate's engineering are fairly accurately cut, but they're not 100%, they're just cut on a bandsaw. For this job to work, the end of the piece of steel needs to be perfectly square to start with. By using very light cuts with a quarter of an inch diameter end mill, I ended up with a very good finish and the part was at 90 degrees to itself. Here's a pack of 5 inch gauge sweet pea laser cut parts. I don't need all of these parts, I just need the two plates for the outer parts of the crossheads. These are the original ones that are locked tighter to the original blocks, which is when I figured out that it really wasn't going to work but carried on regardless, just to make this other video. You'll find it interesting. This pair of crossheads are now officially scrap, and the new pair will be a lot better. That is provided that I don't mark out the steel with the plates in this position. There really is not much tolerance here for any errors. The piece of steel is one and a half inches by half an inch, and the end plates also measure one and a half inches, but only in one plane, front to back. When I turn the plate round the other way, so it's top to bottom, the plate is clearly longer than it is the other way. You can see the problem really clearly when I turn it round. It just isn't going to work. Please reference the Workshop Topics video. I'm using the original crosshead that I made, which is now scrap, to make sure that the piece of steel bar and the crosshead plate align perfectly. As usual, I'm using a Sharpie permanent marker for marking out blue. The part was clamped in the machine vise on the milling machine. Please note that I am not cutting up to the line. The reason for this will be obvious later. I'm using a quarter of an inch diameter end mill to cut a groove in the piece of steel. A very deep groove. In fact, very shortly, the end of the piece of steel will fall off. My milling machine is over 50 years old and it was not good quality to start with. It is a Nairock milling machine, which is the word Korean spelt backwards. The finish of the components isn't good, but it works and it's worked for a long time and I've machined a lot of parts using it. Eventually the end of the steel bar falls off. That's one down, one to go. What I then did was took fine cuts across the end to make sure it was perfectly square and marked it out one more time like you've already seen. This will be the second crosshead block. Don't worry, I'm not going to show the entire process again just the final cut, and here it goes. Yes, it's cut. I cleaned up the first block on the belt sander, and the parts are still oversized and need a bit more milling. But first, something that's very important, cleanliness. My workshop's very messy, and my machine tools are full of swarf, but only in the chip trays. Before doing any milling, it's really important to make sure there isn't any swarf sat in the bottom of the machine vise. I'm removing some of the excess steel from the second block because it was slightly bigger than the first, and then it gets serious. In this part of the clip, I'm actually going too fast. The chips are starting to come away from the steel a different colour. This is not really a problem with quality carbide tip tools, but it certainly would be with milling cutters like these. I was careful not to let the heat build up too much, because also that expands the steel. 
and then when it cools, you may find that the part is undersized, but not so in this case, I left it purposely oversized, as you can see here. Why did I do that? Well, don't forget, it will need cleaning up when the job is complete, and I don't want it to be exactly the right size, because then I wouldn't be able to clean off the tool marks. I cleaned the machine vise and refitted the parts in place, and now I'm taking a cut very close to the line, but not below it. At any point, these jobs can go wrong, so you have to think ahead and take your time. I wasn't born a machinist. It's something that I have to do, and I don't dislike it really, but it's something I wouldn't like to take up as a career. And now it's top tip time. To compare the height of the two blocks, I need to make sure they're on a flat and level surface. And I do have a surface plate, but that's round the back of the bench and it's very heavy. A quick and simple solution is to place the parts on a steel rule, close together on the bench. And as you can see from this clip, the parts look almost identical. From now on, it's very important to know which is which of these two blocks. So, apart from marking out in advance of the slot that I'm going to machine in these two pieces of metal, I've put L on one for left and R on the other for right. And to further avoid confusion, I've drawn two arrows showing me which part of the crosshead goes towards the front of the engine. And that is it for this episode. All I have to say is stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.